Well, good morning, everybody. Brother Leslie Wilds here, Pastor, King James Bible Baptist Church, 1402 East Fulton Street, Garden City, Kansas. Amen. It is the 21st day of November, the year of our Lord, 2021. Amen, indeed. It is 8.53 a.m., are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? I hope you are, friends. I know that I am, by the grace of God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Electronic Choir. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everybody. It's Sunday. woo -hoo. Church day time to worship the Lord in spirit and truth, study His Word, and have a great time doing it. Welcome, everybody. Um... It is Sunday, and of course, you know, Thanksgiving is coming up, and um, I work retail, so I get to see all the Black fr Friday ugliness going on, but it hasn't been that bad. You know, um, they talk about consumer confidence, you know, or people confident, and there's not a whole lot of confidence going on. People are, you know, throwing their money, it's like going for broke, <laughs> you know, <laughs> throwing it all in there, hoping it'll get better, you know, it's a gamble, but unfortunately from the looks of it, it's going to get worse people need to get ready for um tribulation that's coming okay so but anyway i want to before we start on um on this sermon i want to lift up some people king james bible baptist in new york city brian kelly fighting the good fight um pray for him and his ministry um brother dan price got back from a little vacation time he went down into central kentucky and he kind of fell in love with the place. Of course, I don't blame him. It's a pretty country over there. So, But he's back, and he's doing his ministry work. Just pray for him. Pray for this ministry, too. We're moving forward and coming on to Christmas season, and I got some things going on, and, and I got my um, Cult Busters series. I call it Cult Busters. Here, live, we'll be discussing the various cults and what they believe and how we can best counter them with the Word of God, the Bible, correctly. So we can correct them, try to, you know, get them on the right track. It's a, it's a hard job, but someone's got to do it. But anyway, you know, that's what we're going to be doing, too, in this year, this ministry. What I'm be talking about today is what is what is the ultimate woman in God's eyes? I'm going to read to you something in Proverbs. And the more, the more I read it, the more I say, Lord, I wish I had a woman like that. I wish I had someone like that. And you know what? This is this is generally my Mother's Day sermon. Yeah, I got a Mother's Day sermon, all right. Problem is, the people only listen to it on Mother's Day, and they won't bother to, you know, listen to it any other time. But this is so important. Ladies, stick around. This Bible, this tells you exactly what makes a woman a virtuous woman and how you can put a smile on the face of God. You love the Lord Jesus Christ, want to put a smile on him, be like this woman we're going to read about. Before we do, let's go to the Lord in prayer, okay? Let's start it right. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this online time of fellowship, this online Bible study and sermon. And Father, I just pray you give me unction and anointing to preach and teach this word, Lord, that go out and not come back void and accomplish what you would have accomplished. Father, that it would win a soul, that it would convict a heart, Father. Father, we just pray all this, and we pray that your word would permeate our hearts right now, Father. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. It's King James Bible's out. If you don't have a King James, well, grab what you got. Follow along best you can. <laughs> I had a guy tell me the other day, oh, you, you you said that if you don't read King James, you're going to hell. I never said that. I never said that at all. Have you ever you ever listened to my sermon? Uh, Yeah, how long? For about it? 30 seconds? Uh, uh, maybe. Uh, yeah, no wonder. Listen to the sermon. I want to go to heaven believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I preach and teach exclusively from the King James authorized authorized edition. Okay, you get the best from me. Okay, bring whatever you want if you want. Like I told a guy, if he wants to bring in a farmer's almanac, it's his business. But I preach and teach from the King James authorized Bible. Amen. All right, go to Proverbs. We'll go to chapter thirty-one. And basically, I'm going to lay the groundwork, then I'm going to go on straight to the to the lesson. Basically, the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. Now, this is chapter 31. This is starts starts about talking about um, how to treat a woman. And, you know, the mother basically telling the son, hey, this is what a virtuous woman is. <laughs> and um, I want you all to go to verse 10. We're going to start this. Start this um, sermonette Bible study here at verse 10. So, um, Proverbs 31 10. I'll give you a second or two to get to it. Ready? All right. Hear ye the word of the Lord from the King James Holy Bible. And it says, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that. He shall have no need of spoil. Mm. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. <clears throat> she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field, and buyeth, and with the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength, and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the die staff. She stretched out her hand to the poor, yea, she reached forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow, for her household, for all her household, are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen, and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looked well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands. And let her own works praise her in the gates. Wow. Can you imagine that? Is that amazing or what? God's word is amazing. The ultimate woman. Let's go over that. I tell you what. If I could just find a woman that, that, that could do half of this stuff, I'd be a wealthy man. <coughs> you know, I'm one of these guys. I, You know, I like staying married. I like being, I like having a... um. A good, strong home. You know, I used to admire my grandparents for being married as long as they could and as long as they were and how they got along with each other. And even when they didn't get along with each other, they got along with each other. It was amazing. And my grandmother, you know, she did a lot of this stuff. She was very virtuous, you know, taking care of the family, you know, and all. And, you know, when you look at it, you look at a modern, you know, a lot of these people say, oh, I'm a modern, modern woman. I, I don't need a man. Yeah, you do. You think you think you don't, but you do. <laughs> now, you know, it's it's amazing that, you know, 
This is God speaking. This is coming from his word. You know, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above ruby? It sure is. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so he shall have no need of spoil. He knows that his wife works hard and loves her. And he knows that he don't have to worry about her running around. to no honky-tonker nowhere. Why? Because she's a woman of God. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. You know, not every woman stays home and work. You know, you know, the thing about it is we have to make a living. There are women out there working double shifts who are single or divorced by or for whatever reason that have to do what they have to do. And God bless them for working those double shifts. Many times they don't get the pay, equal pay that a man gets for the same job. And, you know, there was a time growing up when I was growing up in my, that, you know, my mother was on her own and she went double shifts to make sure that we had food on the table. You know, a virtuous person, a virtuous woman loves her family, loves her husband. Most importantly, loves the Lord. If you put the Lord first in your life, everything else will fall into place like it's supposed to. But you've got to do it according to his word, not according to some women's liver, or some, somebody, some, some yahoo that comes and gives you and tells you something that's not scriptural. Number one, if you put your trust in the Lord, if Jesus Christ, God Almighty, is your number one, it's going to show. Let's go on. Verse number 15. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. You know, my uh, mother-in-law, she's from the Philippines, you know, one thing I bet, she's a quintessential homemaker. I will say this about her. Um, she would get up early in the morning. She cooked that breakfast. She'd have breakfast ready on the table. Husband would be up. He'd go to work as a policeman or whatnot. And, you know, the quintessential homemaker. And she definitely, um, she's something else. Now, she's Catholic. She's trying to, been witnessing to her for a while. Yet, um, she's a virtuous woman. She takes care of her family. And she rises up while she yet not given meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth the field and buyeth, and the fruit of her hand she planted the vineyard. A woman that stays busy taking care of her family and doing things to make a little extra money. Let's go on. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good, her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands on the spindle and hands on the dye staff, spinning cloth and weaving cloth. She stretched out her hand to the poor, yea, she reached forth her hands to the needy. Now here you have a woman, a godly woman, a godly woman who loves her family, who loves God Almighty, who's doing what she's supposed to be doing. Yet she still has time to give to those people, has a heart. Sounds like a Christian woman to me. Sounds like somebody who's washed in the blood. Sounds like somebody who loves the Lord. Amen. And she stretched out her hand to the poor, yet she reached forth her hand to the needy. What, what a wonderful picture of a woman. You know, this is the Mother's Day sermon. Did you know what? This is important. I would love to find a woman like this. And I'm sure they, there are a few of them out there. But you know what? What a wonderful thing. You want to know, you want to know how to please God? You want to know what a, what a great woman is? The Word of God says it right here. Now, I know some of you gals will be, oh, you just, you just want to talk about us women, blah, blah, blah. What about you men? Oh, I'll, I'll, we'll get to them too. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> Most of the sermons I'm talking about are referring to men or just humanity in general. But we're talking right now about what a virtuous woman is, what God considers a great woman. She's not afraid of the snow <laughs> for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth 
among the elders of the land. Why is that? Because all the elders of the land say, hey, this guy, what a great guy he is, what a great wife he is. What an example of what a godly woman should be. And all the elders of the town, and the guy sits there and he knows, yeah, I'm secure. I got a great woman who loves me. She takes care of my family. She won't do me wrong. And number one, most importantly, she trusts the Lord. If you can find a spouse who loves man or woman, who not only loves the Lord, but, but trusts the word, reads the word, you're going to have one good partner. You know, the Bible talks about being equally yoked. That means if you're a born-again Bible-believing Christian, the last thing you want to do is get hooked up with a Catholic, someone who's lost. I'm sorry. You'd be equally yoked. You're not going to go anywhere with a Catholic or a Muslim or anybody else. You have to be equally yoked, friends. If you're a Bible-believing, born-again Christian, you need to find a, a mate that believes the same thing you do. That way you'll grow together as you're supposed to. Problem is, however... That, you know, we too busy, we look at her eyes, ooh, how pretty he or she is, and we let the lust of the flesh take over, and, you know, we're all thinking with our hearts, and that's, that's not right. Let's go on. Verse 25, strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. In spite of her hard day, in spite of what she goes through, she'll still speak kindly. Why? Because this, this is a picture of a woman who trusts the Lord. This is a picture of a blood-washed, born-again believer. And this is Proverbs. How a person should be, how a woman should be. She looketh well to the ways of her household, verse number 27, and eateth not the bread of idleness, laziness. No, she stays busy for her family. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Amen, amen. Children praise her. Husband praises her. She's loyal to her God and her husband and her family. There is a way of doing things. There is a way if you put it in perspective, friends, it'll help you. Number one, if you don't put God first in your life, you're never going to get anywhere, friends. Whoever's first in your life, that's your religion. That's, your, that's who you love the most. Amen? Put the Lord first. Lord Jesus Christ, my Redeemer first. Then my spouse. And then my children. And so forth. And then down the line is myself. That's what we're supposed to do. What a picture. What a picture. You know, she, I, that's one of my favorite ones. There's nothing like a good breakfast to start you off in the morning, amen. She ariseth also wide as yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. You know, I look at that and I think to myself, wow, what a great woman. And you know, this woman right here that the Bible's talking about is a humble woman, a woman who cares, a woman who's focused is on the job that God had her ministry. What is her ministry? Her family, her husband. Who she when she when she when she came together and they and they said, Oh, till death do us part. Better for worse, richer for poor. She was a woman of integrity, a true woman of God. And it's because of that, and it's because of that she is respected by her husband, by her children. Why? Because a woman like that will raise her children upright in the admonition of the Lord and to obey their daddy. She's going to do that too as the head of the household because that's what a godly woman is. A woman of God should be like. More often than not, we can't find that. 
We hear about Jezebels every day, and believe me, I believe there's 150 to 200 Jezebels for every godly woman out there, sadly. I wish there were more. I wish there were more. All I've seen out there is filthy mouth reprobates and barfly rejects and some of the nastiest women you've ever heard and saw. They got them right here in this town, too, boy. They sure do. They got them in your town, too. Bad attitudes, ungodly, you know, ungrateful, God-haters, blasphemers. Oh, yeah. But what a picture. What a picture of a woman who dedicates her life to the service of God. How did she serve God? By doing the ministry that God assigned her to do. Her family. Amen. What a great and virtuous person. What a wonderful woman that is. I'd sure like to, I'd sure like to meet somebody that would at least, <laughs> at least she loves the Lord. The most important thing. You know, if you find a, guys, if you find a gal that she loves the Lord and, and it's just absolutely wonderful, and she don't know how to cook, that's fine. As long as she loves the Lord, I mean, teach her how to cook, amen. <laughs> but you know what? The most important thing, ladies, ladies, this is for you. That your number one love and your number one affection should be the Lord Jesus Christ. That beautiful Lamb of God who hung on the cross. Your number one love and desire is to please him. Because when you please him, you'll please your husband and you'll please your family, and you'll do it according to God's word. This is the most wonderful picture I've ever seen of what a woman should be like, a good, virtuous woman. Proverbs chapter 31, starting at verse number 10 all the way down to 31. The ultimate story of the ultimate woman, a woman who loves the Lord and cares for her family. Who can find a virtuous woman? Verse number 10. For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Wow. Wow. You know, in this sinful world we live in, to find any kind of person like that is extremely rare. And you know what, ladies? You can be that person. You can be that person, that virtuous woman of God. God is praising. This is the word of God. And it's praising a woman like this as godly and righteous. What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing indeed. You know, friends, I'm here to tell you, I had a I had a mother who was every bit this virtuous person. And, you know, when she was on her own, she worked. She 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 did the job of a mom and a dad in many cases. And a dad in many cases. You know, let me tell you, friends, love your moms. Care, love, if, if mom's still around or maybe you were raised by a stepmom, love her, care for her. Let her know that, hey, God became a man and died for her. If she's not saved, you need to you let her know about what Jesus did. Maybe you're raised by an aunt or a grandma or some other person that wasn't your mom, but maybe she was a good, a good righteous person, you know. Let her know you love her, okay? Pray for her. You know, friends, let me tell you something. The greatest gift of all is salvation. Salvation, that is eternal life. Paid for on the cross by God in the flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ, the creator of the universe. The Bible says in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Friends, I'm here to tell you, um, you seriously need to think about what I'm fixing to tell you. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, let me tell you something. You are missing the greatest relationship of all. First of all, God became a man because hell is a real place. The Bible makes it clear he wants none to, none to perish and all to come to repentance. 
God became a man because we have a terminal disease called sin. And unless we address that, we're going to wind up in hell. So we have to go to the cross. God became a man, lived a perfect sinless life, went to the cross, and freely gave his life as a ransom for many. Shed his precious blood, the Lamb of God, that by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, and what he did for us on the cross, we have salvation. Not by works, by grace. The Bible says by grace we are saved through faith. Faith in what? The finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross at Calvary. Well, what must I do to be saved, preacher? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Did you have a good... Did you have a good mom growing up or someone, was there a good woman in your life who raised you? Why not give her a call? Let her know you love her. Some of you may not have had a good relationship. But I'm here to tell you, there is a God who loves you and wants to be your father. You know, somebody lied one time and said, oh, we're all God's children. No, we're not. We're only God's children if we want to be. And if we want to be God's children, we need to obey his word. Amen. What must I do to be saved, preacher? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. You know, we're going to have church service here at 1030. It's now 20 minutes after 9. And um, we will be talking about, we'll be talking about tongues. The, uh, quote, gift of tongues and how it was used back then and how it is it is being misused today. So we're going to be talking about it in various cults. And it is part of my Cult Busters series is what I call it. Cult Busters. Pray for this service today and pray for the cult buster series as well that I will be preaching on friends it's been fun I hope you enjoyed this little um, sermonette and just remember something the Lord loves you very very much why not surrender to him ask him to save you call upon his name today for I promise you you have eternal life to gain. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. This is Brother Leslie Wilds, pastor, King James Bible Baptist Church, 1402 East Fulton Street, Garden City, Kansas. Now, if any of these um, broadcasts are a blessing to you, please let me know. Send me a message, or you can um, write me an um, email at wildsles, W-I-L-D-S-L-E-S, at gmail.com or, or you know you, you, you can reach me that way or on Facebook and let me know if it's been a blessing to you if if you've got saved or anything because of listening to the broadcast I'd love to rejoice with you let me know okay folks until next time may the Lord richly bless you all and remember friends our redemption draweth nigh I love you all the Lord till next time may the Lord richly bless you all beloved Peace.